we're going to go into our first segment here. Chalk talk. Chalk talk. T H O C K T O C K. Chalk talk. Chalkity talkity. Woo. All right. Our subject today transition from club volleyball into the NCAA Division I volleyball. We have many, many friends who have, who have kind of made this transition, especially from a club team, um, just friends all over. And we kind of have the same experience. The biz- biggest experience is the commitment levels. The commitment levels are huge. I mean, what? You're waking up at 6 a.m. every day in the preseason yeah, Hawaii. for us. Yeah. For, yeah, for, not every team does this. Joe's before. waking up at 3 and yeah, going Joe. to the stand four <laughs> hours before practice. <laughs> fired up. Fired up and he drags me along with him. I'm just like kind of there at the staircase. Like, it's oh, a leader. <laughs> a little early, though. Um, you know, for me, I so for this topic, it's uh, really interesting. I get this question a lot from a lot of people. And the first thing I say is if you're going to go play – volleyball in college no matter what level d1 d3 community college naia you've got the buy-in has to be you have to love the game the there's too many kids they show up freshman year and they want to do this club and they want to go party and they want to go stay up all night with their friends and at hawaii we have 6 a.m practices and it's a really it's a it's really alarming for a lot of people to see how much time is put it's a job like this, the programs, yeah. for the most part, giving you money to come play at their program. So they expect you to be showing up every single morning. And that level of buy-in, you don't see – and that's what actually separates, I think, most programs is the – from top down, the type of buy-in they have from their athletes. I think, I think it's crazy from our experience, whether it's volleyball or non-volleyball, you see a lot of D1 athletes that actually do not like their sport because I yeah. feel like they're just doing it, one, for the scholarship, for the free, and they're just miserable. And I feel like yeah. – they're not bought in, and that's why they're not a successful program, a successful player. Um, and you see a lot of people quitting. You see, I mean, the, just a lot of just, like, mental health starts to decline because you're doing some repetitive that you don't like a lot. I know, Max, you've kind of had a, a different background than us. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you kind of went from uh, zero to 100 really, really quickly. Yeah, I mean, you kind of sure. know how it is for – Negative 100 to 100, yeah. But you're, but you're a good example of someone who bought in, even though he wasn't used to that level of, bu- of buying before. Yep. I think, honestly, it's a weird comparison. I don't know if I can totally relate to you guys' experience because I had a period where I was like 16 and 17 and I was just like not feeling volley. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. But I don't know. I think that was honestly good for me because then I just bought into it more. Like I wasn't like burnt out on it. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. It, the, the other thing I think uh, you hear this a lot in our program from our head coach, Charlie Wade, is the phrase he uses, bigger, faster, stronger. And when you step into the next realm or the next stage in college volleyball, the guys, I know for me, I got there. I was this little scrawny kid, uh, short, almost could walk under the net. Look at him now, though. And look at my biceps. Um, <laughs> and you really have to it's, – it's a full commitment. In the weight room, you have to be able to be pushing yourself to make sure that you're able to uh, go through an entire season. Because most people don't realize – the difference between a college season and a club season and you're practicing every single day, you're lifting every single day, your body has to be able to hold up. And most guys, they don't understand that. And they don't go as hard in the off season. And by middle of the season, they're tanking and their number, their statistics are dropping off. And I think that's a really, when you see freshmen on the floor, that's the biggest thing you see is late in the season, their, their uh, performance drops off. And that has to do with body management as well. Yeah. When it comes to any sports, the higher level you go, your body is your bread and butter. That's your money maker right there. Yeah. Then in the gym, you're surrounded by great players. So if you're surrounded by great players, that means once you drop off, someone's there to kind of take your spot. So if you get hurt, chances are another guy's taking your spot. So you see so many guys, I've done this before where it was like, you're hurt. Mm-hmm. You still got to just, just sometimes I, I've taken like three or four uh, painkillers sometimes and just got to get out there and just like, yeah. and just play it out. Otherwise, cause you're scared of uh, someone taking your spot. Yeah. And, and, and that's how brutal it is. And you just got to survive the season. Hey, this this kind of relates to the – I was watching that Jordan documentary that started last yeah. night, The Last Dance. I don't know if yeah. you guys checked that out at all. But yeah. I was also watching just in the, in the hype, the, the prep for it, I was watching this guy that used to be his weight trainer and how different it is NBA players then versus now. Like they say LeBron spends like $3 million or something crazy on yeah. just his yeah. body alone every year. But I don't know. I think that's pretty interesting. And, yeah, like I was talking about the schedule. You're going – playing tournaments sometimes you're playing three matches in a weekend best of five and there was weekends where we had to play best of five literally all five sets in one uh weekend where we're playing back to back to back and so that's that's really tough like i was saying before it's the the physical demand is uh 
is different. It, you, you think about from a club level, you might go, you play best of three and you're a little younger and the volleyball, the level of volleyball isn't as high. So you can kind of get through, but at the college level, it really takes a toll on you. And that body man maintenance part of it is so huge. And yeah. Gage, I know can attest to it because he's had to go through a few stages through his time at Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. The last thing I want to talk about here before <laughs> we get on to our guest here is the actual volleyball aspect. And I think Gage and I, call it more situational volleyball and yeah. how more important that is and what, what did you realize the biggest thing coming to into the college game I mean I knew that I knew that most years for example the biggest the biggest thing that kind of hit me I knew most of the sets okay we're gonna go to your pin hitters but I didn't know for example if you're a right side and if it's out of system like the balls pass off the net most of about I'm, what 60 70 percent of the balls are coming to you and if you want to be good teams if you want to be a good team that ball has to be killed about 90% of the time. And, and that's something that you don't really realize until you go to the higher levels. And, yeah. and the room for error is so much bigger. Like if you're yeah. playing an opponent like, like Long Beach or, or smaller, or, or yeah, smaller, like, smaller, smaller room for error. My bad. Smaller. But if you're playing, uh, playing a high, high level opponent, the room for, I mean, it's, it's just so, so much smaller. And I mean, you see. It's so much more mental. Like, exactly. Like we talk about this. The next stage is so much more mental. And when you talk about, so me as a player, I'm a setter. And so coaches a lot of times like to throw a lot of stats at me. Uh, and I've never been huge on it. But over time, I've gotten more, uh, I've adapted to that and been able to implement that in my own game. And stuff like side out, first ball side out, point scoring, that type of stuff. Like when they brought it to me, I'm like, okay, yeah, I just want to play. Like I'm not sitting here trying to worry about getting the numbers up. But if you look at the correlation between those numbers and teams that win, it's 100%. Like, you have to be good in siding out, the first ball side out, so the ball, the ball that serves, siding out that first time, and then points going off your serve. You have to be really high in those numbers. And you see the top teams. You're not going to be a top team if you're not high in those numbers. And I, For me, I'm like, all right, yeah, you have to be, like, good in those. But for me, it's like, let's just play volleyball. I didn't really understand until later in my collegiate career, now in my professional career, that how – important those numbers are in success at that level it's i think it's crazy how fast you can lose a game like especially if fourth fifth set or third set depending on uh who, who won the first two you can lose a game like that like in a play like in this situation you need to score or else you're losing and i think it's just crazy 